Hello, welcome to the Start and Eleven show. I'm in the hot seat. This week, Ped is away, so he's left it up to me to choose the team for the Wolves game. Um, I'm going to pick a team that I would play, not necessarily one that I think Sean Dice will play, but this is what I'm going with. Obviously, in goal, no question about it, it is Jordan Pickford. I don't think he started the season brilliantly, but he's got better and better as the season's gone on. Don't really think... I can fault him too much on Sunday, left four goals in. There was just one where he come running out of his goal, which he probably could have done better with, but the, it didn't result in a goal. Um, any of the four goals, I don't think you can really blame him for any of them. So that is why he's, he's in anyway, even if he was at fault for all four. I don't really think we've got a, an alternate goalkeeper that you would, uh, would be a toss-up for. So Jordan Pickford in goal for me. Right back is a player who came on at the weekend, I think we need to make a change, not necessarily because Ashley Young is having not a very good time, because I think, ironically, over the last sort of six, seven games, Sunday aside, he's been one of Everton's better players, but I'm going to bring in Nathan Patterson. I think it's about time Sean Dyke give the lad a go. He came on at the weekend. I think he got 17, 18 minutes under his belt at Old Trafford. He got forward a few times, put a good ball in for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Got round the back a little bit. He's an attacking fullback. Let's play to his strengths. Let's get him forward. And I think he's deserves, he deserves a go. He's been fit for a while now. Whether he's Dyke's fit, who knows? But Nathan Patterson is who I'm playing at right back. And at left back... I'm going to play Ashley Young. I think Nick uh, Mikalenko at the moment isn't having a great time. I think he looks a little bit... I don't know whether he's struggling with an injury or whether he's just his confidence is a little bit low. So I'm going to I'm going to stick Ashley Young on the left because I think he has done, like I said, apart from United at the weekend, I don't think he was great. I think he's done really well of late. Got an assist when he played left-back at Leicester, remember, earlier in the season. Uh, so I'm going to give Mikalenko a rest for this one and play Ashley Young at left-back. Centre back, left side, Jared Branthwaite. He started off on Sunday looking like an £85 million centre back. And about 15 minutes later, he'd scored or had a hand in both of Manchester United's goals. Now, some cynics said he was trying to make sure United got the win. I don't believe that. Um, mainly United fans. But in general, he's Everton's best centre back, I think. He's another one. Injuries have curtailed him a little bit this season, but Everton, he's, Everton rather are still a much better side when Jared Branthwaite is in it. He's so comfortable on that left-hand side as well, on the left foot, left foot, right foot. Keeps possession for Everton. And, um, yeah, it's a no-brainer for me for him to play there. The right side, I'll be honest with you, for the first time in a while, this was one where I've had a little think about it and thought, do we make a change here? I toyed with the idea of giving Jay, uh, Jake O'Brien a start. And I'm not going to, I'm going to stick with Tarkovsky. But it's the first time, I think, that I've ever been wondering whether or not Tarkovsky should play. Now, he came off at the weekend against United. He, he definitely has been carrying an injury. He said that on more than one occasion. I think it's his back, and I think he's got a glute problem as well, which hadn't cleared up. And he looked, didn't look like himself on Sunday. And obviously, Jake O'Brien actually got on the pitch because Michael Keane's injured at the moment. Um, is it a bit too much to put O'Brien in, Patterson in, move Young across? I think so. So, therefore, if Tarkovsky's fit, I will play James Tarkovsky. But obviously, there's a Merseyside derby the weekend as well. However, you might argue that this game tomorrow or this Wolves game represents a better opportunity for three points on paper. Uh, you never can tell with the derby, obviously, like last season, but maybe the manager will go with Jake O'Brien if Tarki isn't fully fit, but I'm going to go with Tarkovsky on this occasion. Into midfield, uh, Adrissa Garnagay is going to be sitting in front of the back four. I think... Garner's still Everton's best midfield player, still the busiest player, still makes the most interceptions, the most tackles. Yes, at times he can be loose in possession, but he's nowhere near as, as loose with the ball as some people think. And he's Everton's energy in that midfield, let's be honest. So really, the conversation comes about who partners him. Abdelai Decore, I think even though I feel he is better in a deeper position, not as comfortable on the ball, 
obviously there's no James Garner at the moment. There's no Tim Iraboonham. They're both injured. Uh, so Oral Mangala is going to play for me alongside Adrissa Garnagay. I just think Mangala moves the ball so much better. He's nice and mobile. He helps the you know helps Everton move the ball forward, gets on it, knocks it around a little bit, is more comfortable in possession than what the core is. Uh, and I just think him and Garner will be a better option in midfield for this game against Wolves. Ahead of them, I've gone with Dwight McNeil. Now, on Sunday, he didn't have a very good game at United. I did again. So you with maybe playing him off the right and having Patterson overlap him. But I remember on Sunday when he went clean through in the first couple of minutes and had to turn back onto his left foot. So that's that's been part of my thinking and wound me up a little bit because he can't use his right foot. I also think... Getting him on the ball in those central areas where he can strike the ball is is an asset. Obviously, if he doesn't have a good game tomorrow, then you'd have to look and think, is there a need to make a change in there and, and maybe take him off the side or whatever? But I'm going to leave him off the striker tomorrow in the hope that he has one of his games where he really influences the game. Uh, on the left-hand side, I'm going to play Jack Harrison. I think Lindstrom has been in the side and while I think yes but Lindstrom there's definitely quality in there we mustn't forget that he come to prominence as a number 10 or as an attacking midfield you know a double eight playing in the uh, in midfield when he was in Germany which meant Liverpool were interested in him it's the reason why Napoli went and bought him but what Napoli did was what Everton did which has got him and have put him out on the right wing so we're not even playing him where there's been his best position, if you like. And I just think he's been a bit hit and miss for Everton. I think his better performances have been away from Goodison, to be honest. You know, we've we've seen him, you know, playing at Goodison and throwing his arms up and being taken off a sub and played there against Brentford and didn't influence the game at all. And on Sunday, wasn't really in it. So I'm taking him out. Jack Harrison, you know what you're getting. And I feel like it's worth giving him a go on the left-hand side with his left foot. I think once Jack plays on the right and has to check back, it's it's a lottery then whether he puts a decent ball in. So I'm going to play Jack Harrison. Where Bielsa played him actually for Leeds and where he had eight goals and eight assists and things like that for Leeds down that left-hand side. So Harrison down the left. Illiman and Jai is going to play off the right-hand side for me. I think he can play out there. He's proved it before. I also think it'll help him dribbling-wise, you know, getting it onto the right foot. I think he's really good cutting in off his, on the left-hand side, off the left-hand side with the ball. I think he's a really good dribbler. I think he completed over 50% of his dribbles at the weekend, 7 out of 13 or something, or, or 5 out of 9, and maybe it was Grand Jules he won. He's good at going by players, but when he shifts it onto his left foot, he's not great with his left foot. There hasn't been an end product where I think if he can get half a yard on his right-hand side, then clearly he can put a better ball into the box or work it out and get a better, stronger shot away. I think also having Nathan Patterson on the outside, charging down ahead of him, will free up a little bit of space for him as well. So I'm going to play in Jai on the right. Now, the thing with those three who are behind the striker, they can all be interchangeable. Harrison's had a spell at 10, done all right. McNeil, we know, has probably had his best moments at the 10, even though I think Dwight McNeil is either a left-back or a left-wing-back. I think that's where his position may settle. Um, I feel like he can move across anywhere across the three. The same with Njai, of course, can play the 10, probably his best position, really, um, despite no evidence. Uh, but can also go off on the left-hand side. And up front, I'm going to stick with Beto for this one. I think Everton in the opening half at the weekend, certainly the opening half an hour, because we didn't just play the cheap out ball to Dominic Calvert-Lewin, we actually played better football and we got better win round the back a couple of times and his little runs, little slides, real balls. Remember the one McNeil put through to him where he went, he sort of dragged it across the defender and own Arna come up and he knocked it back under him and hit the side netting. They're the kind of runs that Dom hasn't been making of late. And I just feel like it might encourage Everton to play a, a little bit more football rather than just... It's not Calvert-Lewin's fault, but he's that good in the air that we tend to just launch it to him in the hope that he wins it. And then, obviously, that gives Calvert-Lewin the bit between his teeth if we need him to come off the bench, maybe, and, and 
gets you know get in amongst it because I actually thought when he come on on Sunday he did okay. He was a little bit more involved than what he has been of late. But I just feel like Beto with the crowd behind him at home encourage us to play a little bit more football. We'll see. That is the, the eleven I'm gonna go with. Uh, that Everton needs to win. It's a must-win game, this one. It really is. We've got such a tough month, and this game won't be easy in the slightest. We'll score a lot of goals, but it's a home game, and with our crowd, with the fans being behind the team, can drag us over the line and, and give us a huge win and a big moral boost and victory as well, ahead of a Merseyside derby, the last ever Premier League Merseyside derby at Goodison Park. So let's get out there and win. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. What would you do with the team? Do you agree with me? Is the, you know, I'm sure there'll be plenty of different opinions as well. Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you'd like, subscribe to the channel, do all that good stuff. See you later. Up the trophies.